And Ruth Burgess writes, Christmas came simply. A pregnant woman, a worried father, a night of birth, a healthy child, just God. Unwrapped, vulnerable, lying in a manger, living in our world. This year, Christmas comes to Lakefield and Young's Point simply, in the quietness of our own homes and hearts, without the pageants and cantatas, without the hustle, without the crowds. But it comes. Christmas comes to meet us in the stables of our times, in the midst of our own worries, in the midst of our own vulnerabilities, in the midst of our own grief. Christmas comes. God comes. Thanks be to God. Amen.
The poet Anne Weems wrote, what I'd really like to give you for Christmas is a star, brilliance in a package, something you could keep in the pocket of your jeans or in the pocket of your being. We've come tonight for the light, for the shining candles and the smiles on young faces and the brilliance of tears on a neighbor's cheek. But remember the words of the psalmist. Give to the Lord all families of the nations. Give to the Lord glory and power. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring gifts. Enter his courtyards. Bow down to the Lord in his holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. On this Christmas Eve, we tremble at the wonder we remember together. God entered our world in the body of a poor child, born on a dark night in a chilly stable, with only a manger for his bed. God entered the world and took on human form to show us how to live in hope, peace, joy, and love. When we light the Christ candle, we remember the star above the stable. We celebrate the light coming into the darkness. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest. We give thanks for the brilliance of stars. We give thanks for the birth of Jesus Christ. God with us.
May some starry imperative lead you to the birthplace of something true, something wonder-filled, something that needs you to hold it safe and warm. May some angel chorus surprise you in the night with a song unbelievably beautiful about something unimaginably good. May strangers, wise and shepherd-like, bring you gifts which are born of wisdom and vigilance. May Christ be born to you, be born in you, be born for a world beyond Herod's and Caesar's. Come and worship the Christ child this night. Amen. Would you join your hearts in prayer with me this evening? In silence you watched, waited, yearned, until your heart could break no more. So you came to us in a stable where no one noticed you, by a well where you welcomed the outsider, on a hillside where you fed the hungry, on a cross where you died for us. In love, you came to us. In silence, we watch, wait, yearn. Come, Lord Jesus, that we might rejoice once again. Amen. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of the Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning to be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. I cannot tell you how the light comes. What I know is that it is more ancient than imagining, that it travels across an astounding expanse to reach us, that it loves searching out what is hidden, what is lost, what is forgotten, or in peril, or in pain. That it has a fondness for the body, for finding its way toward flesh, for tracing the edges of form, for shining forth through the eye, through the hand, through the heart. I cannot tell you how the light comes, but that it does, that it will, that it works its way into the deepest dark that unfolds you, though it may seem long ages in coming, or arrive in a shape you did not foresee. And so may we this day turn ourselves toward it. May we lift our faces to let it find us. May we bend our bodies to follow the arc it makes. May we open and open more and open still to the blessed light that comes.
Reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Who put Joseph in the back of the stable? Who dressed him in brown, put a staff in his hand, and told him to stand in the back of the crush, background for the magnificent light of the Madonna? God chosen, this man Joseph was faithful, in spite of the gossip in Nazareth, in spite of the danger from Herod. This man, Joseph, listened to angels, and it was he who named the child Emmanuel. Is this the man to be stuck for centuries in the back of the stable? Actually, Joseph probably stood in the doorway, guarding the mother and child or greeting the kings and shepherds. And when he wasn't in the doorway, he was probably urging Mary to get some rest, gently covering her with his cloak, assuring her that he would watch the child. Actually, he probably picked the child up in his arms and walked him in the night, patted him lovingly until he closed his eyes. This Christmas, let us give thanks to God for this incredible man of faith, into whose care God placed the Christ child. As a gesture of gratitude, let's put Joseph in the front of the stable, where he can guard and greet and cast an occasional glance at this child who brought us life. For if there was ever a year we needed a Joseph, this Christmas is surely it. This year we need someone to guard and greet, who does the right thing in spite of the naysayers, who chooses the faithful path in spite of the danger, who stands by and stands up, who upholds and names Emmanuel, God with us. God chosen Joseph, guardian, protector, and guide. Thanks be to God.
And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to the other, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thanks be to God. Most of us who gather in Bethlehem on this night are not star seekers. We've not traveled our dreams month after month, year after year, poring over predictions and promise. Most of us sit on our hillsides tending our sheep business as usual. We've heard the rumor of stars, but we don't really give ourselves to seeking. After all, there is more than enough to do in the daily tending. We're simply not on the lookout for stars, nor expecting any light in the darkness. I suppose the important thing is, in the light of the glory of the Lord, to recognize the voice of an angel, to get up, and in spite of our sheep, to go even unto Bethlehem to see this thing that has happened.
Would you join your hearts in prayer with me this evening? Holy One, we pray for all who watch and wait this night, those who watch for death, those who wait for birth. We pray especially for those who watch and wait alone in fear or with longing, where circumstances are far from ideal and conditions far from sanitary. For all those hidden away, lest their predicament should taint the revelry of others. We pray for all who are far from home, especially those to forced to flee their home because of injustice, oppression, those rendered homeless by poverty or violence, those isolated by pandemic. May the piercing cry of a child in the darkness be a symbol of hope for a world weary with suffering. May the soft footfall of shepherds replace the ominous march of soldiers' boots. And however unlikely it might seem, May peace gain a foothold tonight as God's people rediscover hope in hidden places and your angel song above the noise of war. May we hold our collective breath and find light creeping in to nudge the darkness of the world into submission as love pushes at the boundaries making change a possibility. And so may this stable become a sign of stability. May the star become the sign of potential. And may the cradle be the sign of promise for all the world. Amen. My friends, traditionally, as we would sing this hymn, Silent Night, we would pass light from one to another, sharing the promise of light that came into the world this night. Since we cannot be together this evening, we're asking that you light a candle and place it in your window to share the light with the world. And if you take a moment, take a picture of whatever light you light, whatever candle you, uh, you set aflame and aglow, and send that picture to us on Facebook or through email. Uh, I'd like to use some of those images during Epiphany if it's possible. And so as we come close to the end of our worship, let's Let's spread the light. Let's spread the joy of Christmas.
My friends, may the news of the angels fill your life and your heart with great joy. May the witness of the shepherds affirm you in the message of the gospel. May the sound of the incarnate word bring you peace and hope. May the presence of the sacred baby remind you of your own holiness. And may this Christmas gift you, bless you, comfort you, inspire you as you journey into another year. Amen. Thank you.